On today's podcast, we talk about histamine intolerance. If you are dealing with things like nausea or a chronic runny nose or food allergies that get worse at certain points or motion sickness, PMS, headaches, lots of other types of symptoms, you might be dealing with something known as histamine issues. Histamine is a neurotransmitter, it's an immune response, and it can cause all of those symptoms and more. So today we talk about the types of foods, we talk about the types of enzymes and all of the different pieces that drive up histamine and why it creates a problem for you. Live your life within the moment, moment, and don't go wait until the morning, morning, you never know when it is over, over, all that I know is... Happy hump day, everyone. Hello, welcome back to the food code. I am Becca, not Baca. <laughs> no, I hear, so here's the funny thing. Someone actually wrote a review for Liz and I and wrote Liz and Baca, like B-A-C-A. And this is probably not, an accident, though. It was probably an accident, but this is also not the first time that people think that when I say my name, I'm saying Baca. And I think it might be slightly the like Chicago accent of, you know. But yes, this is not the first time. So apparently I need to get better at saying my name and having people understand what I'm saying. <laughs> also, who I want to know if anyone's actually named Baca. I, if so. Chewbacca. Well, Yes. Oh my gosh. So Art used to have his alarm as Chewbacca. I wanted to <laughs> kill him. <laughs> and now I think they uh, actually took away with the update on the phone. They like took away songs that you could have because oh. he used to have like something different yeah. that was, um, it was actually Rob Bailey's mm. hustle. Yep. Uh, who is now turned very different from, yeah. I don't know if you ever listened to Rob Bailey music, I but didn't. Yeah. Okay. So he, he used to be more like rock now he's more country twang. I don't know. Which, can we talk about that song that is number one in the charts right now? Richmond, West of... Oh, Richmond, Richmond West of Richmond. Yes. North of Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. So good. It's a good song. He has a very unique voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so happy for him. He has turned down just... Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, yeah. But to like sell out. God, those lyrics are fire. They are. And he like he was struggling with mental disorders and depression. And yeah, um, I love that it's blown up. And I think the guy, the um, lead of Big and Rich is actually taking him on for oh, a- Oh, really? Yeah, for a, um, for a deal, like a- like an Album? Album deal. Yeah. That's I was going to awesome. say CD. Well, in case anyone's <laughs> wondering, Kelly Clarkson just came out with a new album. I haven't bought it yet, but I'm waiting to listen to it because sometimes I still see it. Liz loves Kelly Clarkson. I do. Um, I I've been really into, and I'm like totally making my children country kids. Um, yeah. Carson rode a dirt bike for the first time. I saw on that Saturday night. He loved it. And you know, he had that big old like dirt bike helmet. Uh, and I was okay with it. Cause I think it was also running out of battery. It was a, it was like a battery powder one. Yeah. So it probably wasn't going as fast as it could. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was on it for almost an hour straight he in the pitch like black. He, he like, looked like he was doing really good. He was, I was very proud of him. He is definitely not my more coordinated child. Um, Taylor is absolutely more coordinated than him. And so he's like my accident prone kid. I was very nervous the whole time, but I was also very proud of him. He was doing very good. Um, yeah. Our but neighbors yeah. have, a couple of them have like dirt bikes. and right. They're bigger though, which makes me nervous. Nick wanted to get him a electric bike or a dirt bike for his birthday this year. And I was like, he's five, like, wait a year. Let's wait a year. Um, but it was inspiring to see him do that. But yeah, he's obsessed with bury me in Georgia. It's Kane Brown song, which is a very good song by the way. And whenever we get in the car, um, he's like, can we play bury me in Georgia? I'm like, yes. And then Taylor sings to all of the songs and it's so cute. (laughs) I have Marcus hooked on watermelon sugar high right now. (laughs) I haven't heard that song. Watermelon sugar. You know, you know it. I'll play it. Do I? Okay. You absolutely know. Um, yeah, I have like the same playlist. And so actually Art and I were talking because we're leaving uh, for our trip on Monday. M- he's going to make a new playlist yes. because we listen to the same things. Mm-hmm. I feel like I um, I listen to a lot of Christian music and like Lauren Dangle and like the best of like 2023, but it's like always the same ones. And there's good. I mean, I, I don't mind that, but also want diversity. Otherwise it's yeah. house music for me yeah. or country. Yeah, I'd like that too. We do a but- lot of country and I listen to hardcore rap. 
Yeah, you do listen to a lot of horror. <laughs> I have to be like in the mood for it. But yeah, Chill House, I listen to a lot of that when I'm working. A couple of my friends um, mm-hmm. that are DJs, I'll like follow their channels and listen yeah. to it because like some really good remixes. But anyways, so we're back on the mic. Uh, <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks, so you just get to hear our bantering. Um, I wanted to announce our winner for the August review. And what we're going to be doing is every Friday, we're going to read a review and we're going to start to cycle some of our little gifts that we're going to give you guys. So this particular person, uh, her name is Deidre. She wrote a review and it says, loving my life after listening. The food code is all that I listen to in my commute to work. I was over music and I wanted something that inspired me, made me laugh and benefited my life in some way. I started to implement some of the things in my life and started to quickly after only a month, see and feel positive results. Love listening to Liz and Becca. And I tell all my friends to listen to. So you guys are the best. I love that you are applying things. I think this is a big gap for a lot of people. You can be such a consumer of information, but if you're not applying it, it's not really beneficial to you. Best quote Alex Hermosi has said lately, there is not a knowledge overload out there. There is an application underload. Yep. It is, you guys, like, listen to Alex. He is so good. So good. <laughs> so, so good. Uh, it's really been cool. Art and I were talking when we were camping a couple weeks ago, he had his big launch. So mm-hmm. we were watching it on, I decided to, and by the way, guys, don't do this tour. <laughs> so we've been going camping near Starved Rock and we love the campground. We love the area. We've been able to do both of the parks and there's like short hikes you can do because with a four-year-old, you're not lasting very no, long. No. So that's been fun. And I said, okay, well this Saturday I had planned to go to the apple orchard and then we were like, mm, that's only going to last maybe like an hour. So what else could we do? So I looked up some boat tours in which I spent $150 for us to go on a two hour. The architecture tour. No, this is a different boat. Okay. Um, That was really cool. And I highly recommend. That was my second time. I love the architecture tour in Chicago. If you guys ever visit, definitely do it. I got a Groupon. It was 65 bucks for all three of Mm -hmm. us. Nice little hour and a half um, tour. Really cool. Uh, But this was in Ottawa area. So it was two hours and it was on, you know, the Illinois River, which is fine. But there's (laughs) nothing to see. Okay. (laughs) They literally. (laughs) Okay. Well, first of all. Why would they do that? What, the guy that was narrating things, I went downstairs to go to the bathroom and came back up and he's literally sitting there sleeping <laughs> with the microphone <laughs> in his hand. He told us about the new YMCA that's going up because it's like the hot thing in town. You know, He's like telling us about this YMCA that they're building and that track up here is going to be the walking track that you see. And over here is going to be the swimming pool. Like no one gives an F. We're... <laughs> We're just on this tour. So it was super (laughs) slow. I kid you not. We get to like the turnaround point and Art and I looked at each other. We're like, we have a whole hour back. (laughs) It was so boring. And so I was like, that was a bust and waste of money. But, uh, I totally forgot where I was going with this story. Just (laughs) don't do the tour. That's what you said. Don't do (laughs) do the tour in Ottawa. Um, I don't even remember what the point of that was, but anyways, (laughs) We are going to be talking today about histamine intolerance. Good transition. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I literally lost my train of thought with what okay. I went down that rabbit hole for. But, um, anyways, let's, let's dive in, guys. Let's dive in. This, histamine intolerance. This, this is something that I see so much. Mm-hmm. I would say, like, the majority of clients that come to us have some level of histamine intolerance. Oh, yeah. I would say at least eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. They just don't know it. And you guys will learn a little bit more why, because a lot of the work that we do supports this. And sometimes immediately we can see from symptoms and labs, boom, let's get, you know, a support in place for this. By the way, if you haven't done so, uh, we have, our team has created a cold and flu season guide. And Mm -hmm. we talk a little bit about like allergies and things, because many of the symptoms that we're going to talk about with histamine intolerance mimic allergies and people don't realize it and they're just taking all these antihistamines and whatnot. Um, So that guide is available. The link will be in the show notes. All of the supplements that we talk about in there or things that Becca and I keep in our cabinet at home are linked out in full script. So we created a full protocol there. Obviously you don't need to buy everything, but you can go and pick the items that you want 
instead of having to search. Uh, and then you can get them for uh, a discount in our practitioner portal. So that's a side note because some of these things that we're going to talk about, there are natural supports for this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so let's dive into kind of what is histamine, then we'll go through some symptoms that are very common and causes of it. Uh, so histamine is a neurotransmitter and it's an immune messenger molecule. So it's involved in processes in cl- involving like hydrochloric acid secretion for digestion. So we HCL, um, stomach acid, basically. Uh, it helps kind of triage water reserves to key areas of the body, aka why a lot of t- times people go- will get swelling mm-hmm. uh, when they have, speaking of swelling with my child, oh my God. Carson had an allergic reaction last week. He like somehow hit his face on a bush. I was not around to see this. I don't know how the F it happened, but his lip blew up like freaking Will Smith and Hitch. Like, mm-hmm. and it didn't, t- it took two days to go down. We put Benadryl on top of it. We gave him Benadryl because I didn't have like the Genexa. Um, mm-hmm. And then we gave him children's ibuprofen because he was writhing in pain. I felt so bad for this kid anyways. That is what the water reserves do a lot of times is to like send swelling basically to create an inflammatory response. But histamine receptors are located all over the body. Um, They have a lot of functions. Uh, H1 receptors are like smooth muscle endothelial cells, which are the lining of the gut. Um, And they affect, I'm sorry, skin (laughs) and the gut. There's different cell linings, Mm -hmm. essentially. Um, They affect the skin, blood vessels. Uh, Think Benadryl and Claritin basically block these receptors. H2 receptors are cells in the intestine that control acid secretion. They cause like abdominal pain, nausea, increased heart rate. H3 receptors are central nervous system. Uh, They control the nerves, sleep, appetite, and behavior. Uh, And then H4 receptors are thymus, small intestine, spleen, colon, bone marrow, white blood cells. These create like an inflammatory response. So one of the major effects of histamine is causing blood blood vessels to swell and dilate. So when the body senses that it's threatened, it basically secretes higher amounts of histamine, histamine, and that allows the white blood cells to basically quickly move through the bloodstream and find kind of that threat or infection. Mm-hmm. And it's important. I mean, like this is a natural, healthy response for the immune system to have, but the problem is when it gets overactive. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about the common symptoms of histamine intolerance. And before I share this list with you guys, I think it's really important uh, to remember that you cannot just say, I have this symptom, it must be this. This is the problem with conventional medicine. Mm-hmm. You go in, you have a symptom, they want to you know, slap a diagnosis on it rather than doing the uncovering work, right? Being a detective, right? We want to be a detective of health. And so while you may have a lot of these symptoms, you know, and then you're like, don't get off this podcast and be like, ah, it's histamine intolerance. It very well could be for you. And this could be a a big, um, you know, missing part of your journey, but these things can also be related to other issues uh, in the body. So some common symptoms, headaches or migraines. A lot of times we see that these just kind of come on out of nowhere or you've eaten something and then you're going to have this response you know, within a couple of hours. Difficulty falling asleep, hypertension, vertigo or dizziness. Again, this is one that could also be something with blood pressure or with uh, mineral imbalances. Uh, accelerated heart rate or arrhythmias, difficulty regulating your body temperature. Thyroid's going to play a big role in this as well, right? Anxiety, mood disorders we know start with the gut. A lot of this is going to, you know, make sense when we talk about, you know, things that you can do to start to break the histamines down, but anxiety can be heavily correlated with bacterial overgrowths or parasites or other things. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, flushing. This is definitely a telltale indicator of histamine intolerance. So you get red after you eat something nasal congestion, sneezing, difficulty breathing, also associated with, you know, other allergic responses, abnormal menstrual cycles. You don't even need us to go on the plethora of things that can (laughs) cause abnormal menstrual cycles, uh, hives, fatigue, and, you know, tissue swelling. So histamines travel throughout the bloodstream. And so they can affect every part of the body, the gut, the lungs, the skin, the brain, your entire cardiovascular system. And this is why there's such an array of health problems associated with it. And so it's really challenging to pinpoint and diagnose histamine intolerance if you're not aware of it, or you, you know, aren't looking at the right tests and, you know, really being able to identify this. Um, and so it, when does it become a problem? I mean, it only becomes a problem when you have metabolic disturbances that don't allow you to effectively metabolize histamine properly. 
So when histamine is formed, it's broken down by specific enzymes. So in your central nervous system, it's going to be metabolized by histamine and methyltransferase, HMT. But in the digestive tract, it's broken down by diamine oxidase or DAO. And this is one thing that we've talked about before because DAO is a major enzyme involved in histamine metabolism. So that enzyme is going to convert the histamine into um, imidazole acetylhyde, which does not trigger any sort of reaction in the body. So if you have enough DAO to break this down, you're likely not going to experience a lot of those symptoms, yeah. right? Because it's in, the DAO enzyme is responsible for ensuring that you have a steady histamine level required for balance. So let's think about this from a blood sugar perspective, right? We've got insulin and glucagon and all these other players to make sure that your blood sugar levels stay stable. That's what DAO does essentially mm-hmm. in the gut to break histamines yeah. down. Yeah. So some of the big kind of like causes Adrenal fatigue definitely can exacerbate it. Environmental causes like pollen, dust mites obviously will irritate high histamine issues. That's why a lot of times people that have allergies, if they have gut issues, it tends to make the allergies worse um, because it's kind of like layering issues on top of each other. Lack of sleep will absolutely cause higher levels of histamine issues because again, lack of sleep will trigger an immune response from the stress. Um, A diet high in histamine food, so fermented overripe foods, aged foods, so any, like leftovers. If someone has a really bad histamine at reaction, they struggle with leftovers that are more than like a day old um, because it develops histamine the longer they're in the refrigerator. Uh, excessive alcohol intake, hormonal excess, particularly estrogen. I've done a post on this before that talks about how estrogen and histamine kind of play off of each other. High histamine can drive up estrogen and high estrogen can drive up histamine further. Um, Nutrient deficiencies for a lot of people, stress and anxiety for a lot of people will cause that. Uh, And so some other things that we see that can alter DAO in particularly, SIBO, um, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, some gut microbes produce really high amounts of histamine. So we see this on the GI map. There's particular uh, microbes that we test for that you can see mm-hmm. if it's in a high amount, they're technically histamine producers. Um, so they do that as a byproduct of their metabolism. And we know, you know, if someone's dealing with that and we work to control the gut, it can help bring down a lot of those allergies or reactions. Uh, copper, vitamin C, and B6 deficiencies, because these are all big cofactors to enable DAO to help degrade histamine. Leaky gut, again, seeing a lot of gut things. Uh, Intestinal permeability creates a lot of inflammatory stress in the body, which contributes to poor DAO function. Genetic polymorphisms in DAO enzymes. So this can be seen with like a genetic SNP per se, Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, SNPs, which are pronounced SNPs. Uh, So basically a homozygous DAO would make someone more susceptible to developing a histamine intolerance. And then certain medications, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, aspirin, antidepressants, immune modulators, Humira, Zimbalta. Um, I've actually talked to a couple of my clients about this that have noticed when they went on these, their allergies got worse. Mm -hmm. Um, Anti-arrhythmic, arithmetic, (laughs) anti-arrhythmics, things like metoprolol, um, propanolol, a couple things that help with like heart rate, or I'm sorry, heartbeat, Mm -hmm. Uh, antihistamines, Allegra, Zyrtec actually can make these situations worse. Uh, Histamine blockers, Pepsid, Zantac, things like that. Uh, So a lot of medications actually worsen histamine issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting because some of these, like the H2 blockers, right? Mm -hmm. These are going to be those acid reducing drugs. It would seem because it's a histamine blocker that it would prevent histamine intolerance, but they actually deplete DAO levels in your body. And there's specific tests that we can use Mm -hmm. to look at your DAO and your histamine levels, which is really helpful. If you're really struggling with this, we'll run that test. Um, but histamine is different than your just typical food sensitivities or allergens. Uh, And I think that's important to call out here because a lot of people, as we've said many times on this podcast, think that food is their problem. I'm reactive to this food. I have to be on a specific carbohydrate diet or a low FODMAP diet or a low oxalate diet or whatever it might be. I'm dairy intolerant, right? A lot of those issues stem from lack of enzymes in the body to break foods down. One of those being that DAO enzyme. So you have your pancreatic enzymes and you have various other enzymes in the body. If you have SIBO, you have leaky gut, you have dysbiosis, you have all of these things going on within the gut microbiome. 
yeah, you're not going to tolerate that food right now, but it's not a food issue. It's a function issue. And so when we fix the function, a lot of these things can come back because when we get into really, you know, low histamine or, um, you know, changing somebody's diet according to their reactions with histamines, it gets kind of restrictive pretty quickly. As Becca Mm -hmm. was saying, like even the leftover meats that you prepared for the week, well, meal prep, that's one thing that a lot of people do, right? That, that makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, avocados, spinach, strawberries, a lot of these foods that are one ingredient, whole foods, you want to be able to have into your diet. We need to fix the function issue so you can bring those things back without having exacerbations in allergic reactions. So when we begin to have these symptoms of too many histamine molecules or that, you know, you have a reduced DAO enzyme and now your histamines are overloading the symptoms, this is going to last until your body is able to metabolize the histamine and remove it. So Mm -hmm. this could be chronic for, you know, certain individuals. Um, And so let's talk about like, you know, who has histamine intolerance? Um, You know, 20% or 3% of the population is what it's estimated to be in terms of true histamine intolerance. And that's like a severe situation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people that have like three to five or more of the symptoms we just discussed. You're probably dealing with some, it's the same thing with insulin resistance. You know, yes, a large percentage of the population is now diabetic, but- there is a, I think 90, it's up to 90% of the population has some level of insulin resistance going on. And we see it with clients all the time. Like we start looking at blood sugars and almost all of our clients will see like high nineties, low one hundreds. That's by no means pre-diabetic, but it's on its way. Mm-hmm. And so same thing with histamine intolerance is like, for example, we, we actually didn't mention this as one of the symptoms, but motion sickness is a really common symptom of histamine intolerance or, you know, in an issue with histamine. I was always motion sick. Like I could bear, even with Dramamine, I I had to like sleep basically. And I recently went on a road trip where it was like nine hours each way. I took one Dramamine and I was able to work for hours on my computer. Um, We've been doing, obviously I've been doing a lot of gut work. I've been doing a lot of things to help with my estrogen levels um, after being sick last year. And I have seen a huge change. And so like I, by no means, I have no, I have zero allergies. Like I don't react to allergies. I don't get like runny nose, itchy eyes, anything like that. I never have. Um, but I was always motion sick and I would get flush when I would drink alcohol. I get very red and flush. And so I know that I have some level of histamine issues, but people don't, you know, we just don't think like I don't have allergies. So why would I have a histamine issue? Mm-hmm. And so this is more like diagnosable severe because it's also, we're going to talk about this. It's hard to diagnose. Mm-hmm. And that's why we go off of symptoms when we do this, like when we see an intake form from a client and they have multiple symptoms like migraines, you know, dizziness, nausea or vomiting, flushing, hives, fatigue, things like that. We know there's likely some type of histamine issue going on. So understand that, you know, it's 3% obviously sounds like not very much of the population, but that is diagnose severe histamine intolerance. Yeah. I think just like MTHFR, right? There's different levels Mm -hmm. of, you know, intolerance. So what we look at though is 80% of the individuals that have histamine intolerance are women and most of them are over 40. 20% of the cases occur when histamine containing foods are used in combination with DAO inhibitors, such as alcohol. Wine is high histamine. It's fermented right? Three big factors that are involved with histamine intolerance, leaky gut syndrome or other disorders in the gut, such as Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, gluten sensitivity, or celiac. The second factor is a genetic SNP, as we mentioned with the DAO enzyme. And then we look at heavy alcohol or medication usage, which is another strong risk factor as we you know already covered. So as we you know have mentioned here, it, it's hard to diagnose this. Um, if there are very telltale indications, we're going to supplement and we're going to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. There's no problem. And even for you guys listening, there would not be a problem for you to try something like a histamine block or histamine X or, you know, a DAO enzyme in your diet, especially when you're going to consume higher histamine foods. Because as a practitioner, I will tell you when you've got somebody working on a lot of things with their gut health, things can get real restrictive real fast. And that's not our goal. Our goal is to help you rebuild your microbiome to a point that you can have these foods. And we don't want to make life totally miserable, right? Like we want to be able to give you the 
supplements that you need to tolerate these foods during the healing process. So a lot of times I'll put in a DAO support or a histamine support because I quite frankly don't want to cut all these really good yep. whole foods out, especially if I have to cut out certain, you know, carbohydrates or, uh, you know, low FODMAP foods or oxalate foods or, or, or whatever it might be for that individual. I want to try to be able to help them tolerate these things. And a, a DAO enzyme can make a world of a difference. Um, and so again, there's things that we do in terms of uh, blood testing here. Um, that can be very helpful to really identify. Obviously, genetics testing is very helpful to identify these things, amongst other things. We'll probably do a podcast all about genetics testing soon. Mm -hmm. I just did a genetics test, and it's been a game changer with some of the protocols that I've been going through and kind of unlocking the keys to like plateaus and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting into autophagy and out of the sugar burning state, getting my personal blood sugar down. So anyways, testing for histamine intolerance, we can, you know, do the genetics test. We can do blood tests. There's different, uh, lab tests that can be done to analyze the ratio of histamine to DAO. Um, and then, you know, when we look at a challenge, a uh, histamine challenge would be something that you would cons do on your own consuming, yep various fermented foods or high histamine foods and see if it aggravates your symptoms. Yeah. So things like dried fruit is high in histamine, vinegar containing foods, pickles, mayonnaise, olives, cured meats, think like bacon, salami, pepperoni, soured foods. So sour cream, buttermilk, soured bread, nuts are high in histamine usually, walnuts, cashews, peanuts, uh, aged cheese. So goat cheese is one of those. Uh, vegetables, avocados, eggplants, spinach, and tomatoes are all high in histamine. And then smoked fish and certain types of fish. So mahi-mahi, anchovies, sardines. Uh, so those are all high in histamine. And what you can do, chocolate as well, um, you can try and consume a number of these foods and see if your symptoms or reactions get worse. Uh, things. There's also a difference between high histamine foods and then histamine releasing foods too. Um, so histamine releasing foods are things like bananas, cow's milk, papaya, pineapple, strawberries, tomatoes, um, a lot of artificial preservatives and dyes, things like that. So just something to consider. And then you can go on like a low histamine diet, which is obviously very fresh, fresh cooked meat, fresh caught fish, gluten-free grains, brown rice, quinoa, fresh fruits, other than citrus, avocado, things like that. Um, doing a lot of coconut milk, you know, alternatives to milk, coconut oil, uh, almond butter, leafy herbs, herbal teas, things like that. Yeah. So one, one caveat to that though, in terms of the teas for sure is there are certain foods that will block DAO production. So again, remember we need the DAO enzyme to break down histamines. Alcohol is going to be one of those that blocks that production, energy drinks, black tea, green tea and mate tea. So those would just be some things. And uh, I just did a, a reel on ragweed because it's ragweed season. And it's very interesting to look at certain produce foods that have the same protein structure as certain pollens. So I was uh, just shortly after I had filmed this reel, I was talking with one of my clients and she was telling me how bad her allergies were. And I said, you have a ragweed allergy, don't you? She's like, yeah. And I said, okay, well, here's some other produce foods I want you to remove right now and chamomile tea or um, echinita. I, I can never say that word right. But um, some of these teas that are really good and high in antioxidants and you know, for the normal person would be fantastic to include. But especially during you know seasons where pollen is high or ragweed is high, you want to remove these foods. And for her, we found it was actually bananas that exacerbated her symptoms. And it's because those protein structures they confuse your immune system, right? The immune system's like, what's this? It looks like ragweed, right? Um, and so the same thing comes down to, you know, when we're uh, building someone's diet protocol out here, it gets very complicated very quickly. If you think about somebody with SIBO and likely histamine intolerance, this is where a practitioner comes into play to be able to help you adjust and write out what that can look like for you in terms of foods that you need to avoid and foods that you should be using, Um we want to include, obviously, very high-quality, nutrient-dense foods. So some of those real low histamine foods um, that you can include that also have a lot of, again, cofactors to help the body handle histamine and build DAO enzymes are going to be things that are high in omega-3, high in magnesium. Think pumpkin seeds, almonds, grass-fed butter, you know, wild-caught seafood, same for omega-3. You want to use as much wild-caught seafood as you can, olive oil, things like that. Healthy saturated fats, grass-fed butter, grass-fed meats, pasture-raised, you know, eggs, iron, 
Everybody demonizes red meat. We get a lot of things from red meat. We need that B12, right? We need zinc. We need all of these things. Um, so, you know, grass-fed meat is going to be important. Phosphorus. So almonds, broccoli, again, eggs we can get from there. Zinc, pumpkin seeds. Man, pumpkin seeds are just becoming a powerhouse. They, well, it's pumpkin, it's pumpkin season. This is pumpkin season. <laughs> yeah. Um, they also work good for constipation. But calcium, dark leafy greens, you know, broccoli, wild caught, you know, again, seafood here, meats and grass fed butter. Um, and again, there's, there's unique variables here. And this is why it's important to work with somebody who can help you identify what exactly is going on. Is it your gut health? Is it in being driven by inflammation? Do you have, you know, liver issues or gallbladder issues, bile issues, right? Stress and adrenal issues. And then what's happening with your blood sugar? Because remember that anything that is a response in the body is a stressor in the body, right? A negative response. So I think about all of these defenses that we have within our immune system. You know, you have your adaptive immune system that's constantly, your immune system constantly looking and scanning the body for threats and invaders, right? And this could be other foods that you're consuming that exacerbate this and you don't even realize that because again, uh, you know, you've got a lot of things going on all at one time. It can be really confusing to know, like, where do I start? Um, and so again, we just wanted to, you know, share this with you because a lot of people don't understand histamine intolerance. They don't understand that there's high histamine foods or, you know, histamine producing foods or the DAO blocking foods. And it can feel really overwhelming, but you give your body a little bit of support. You can get back to a place where you can eat these things and not have all these mm -hmm. symptoms be exacerbated. Yeah. So a very common thing that a lot of people it exacerbates their symptoms. Um, so if it sounds like you and you have many of these symptoms that we just went through, maybe it's time to start looking into some of the histamine things that you can adjust. 